Right then, this is uh, another up update on this. I'm using a another kind of bodged up tripod, um, which puts the uh, camera right in front of uh, of me, and I've just knocked it with my knee. Um, right, so since this was seen last, the underside has been painted fuller and then remasked so you can't really see it on this zoom out a bit, there we go also the fuselage band is painted round uh, top wise I've put the dark earth on um, zoom in a bit So all that remains to be done is to put the green on. Um, what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to use a blue tack method. Um, what I'm going to attempt to do in this video is just film this little bit, switch off, get the uh, green together and happening, um, and then edit it together, which is something I've never done with a video before. So there's another first. Um, so there we go, I think the, the browns come out quite nice, the browns are main colour. What I would normally, or used to do, is I would have painted the entire top brown, then put the green over. But because I'm using pre-shading, I, I can't really do that. I probably, probably could if I uh, separated the green part over the brown, and then put the black on again but that's a lot of messing about if you're going to put the black lines on in one go you can do it like this I think I built a uh, a kitty orc that was in two sort of colours of sun did the same thing which came out pretty nice um, also what you can see is the amount of fettling I had to do around this Cockpit windshield. On there, the sun stops shining and it focuses. So there we go. Green. <clears throat> okay, when I uh, talk about using the blue tack method to uh, mask models, it's not actually a mask. What I do, I'm going to demonstrate it, is to simply use the blue tack as a demarcation between the two colours as opposed to an actual physical mask. So, what I do is start off with a piece of glass steel mirror and blue tack what there's just break off a blob put it on the glass then just using the, the roller I roll it out into a sausage Keep rolling and rolling till it's and about this wide. Just roll it out a little bit more. Okay, then put 
put that in the sausage there. Remove a piece of glass. Go back to our kit. Now then what I've also done with this is the bran is a lot bigger. The patches of bran are, are, are bigger and wider than they need to be. The reason being is that if I tried to use this right on that level where the brown stops and the uh, undercoat starts, there's a chance you can have patches where you don't, you know, don't meet. So what I'll do is I always do it. Put this, and then I put this stuff on. So I always do it bigger. So as I put this stuff on, the brown's peeping through there. Look. And then when I when I spray over, I know I'm going to get both colours linked, and I'm not going to have no missing bits in the middle. Just have a bit of a piddle about. Now the thing is with this, if you press it down a little bit to get it to stick, what you'll do is you'll make slight wobbles. Which is which is fine if you, if you're making a a pattern like this, and plus you can if you had a sort of paper cut out mask, you've got you know once it's cut out it that's it. But with this stuff you can you can adjust it as you go. Now there we go. That's what I'm kind of looking for. I'll just get some uh, green in the airbrush, and we'll just get spraying. Right, on to the painting. Um, oops, now my paint of choice, the one I like to use most, is uh, Extra Colour from Hammond. Um, and the thing is, a lot of people will tell you this stuff is a nightmare to get to dry, which it can be. However, due to the fact I actually work as a painter and decorator. What I uh, thin this paint down with, although it's it's quite thin already, it's not far off being ready for spray. But what I'll do is I will put a few drops of this stuff in it. Now you won't be able to get this from your local sort of being cure or anywhere like that you'd have to get it from trade a paint a paint to trade place um but it is a liquid as it says you just put it in your paint it uh, and it dries it quickly uh it's used in, in the trade for when you're painting um outside work back end of the year when it's likely the temperature is going to drop and 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 if you've uh, glossed a load of drain pipes and stuff like that. The, the drop in temperature or change in humidity as well. It can do funny things to it. it. It can make it go flat like matte, or it can put like a white bloom on it that looks like condensation but doesn't actually wipe off. So that's what this is for in the trade. But of course, I just chuck a few drops in it into me extra colour, and I get drying times that aren't that far behind acrylics um, to tell you the truth it's it's a good little tin of stuff to have in your arsenal and of course a biggish tin like that and the amount of you know as I say it's literally a couple of drops it will last you forever and the way I use it is to just Get some out into this, put a few drops into this because it is quite awkward to pour straight out this tin. Put that to one side. Now, get me, get me green, give it a bit of a stir. It's because I don't need that, I don't need a lot. So I'm just basically, I'm just gonna make enough up just to do this little section just to sort of show what's what's happening in my paint process now there we go let's nail stir it blob in there and you can see because I'm, I'm hitting the bottom of the tin with this it's uh, 
this might not work out if I'm... I've got another couple of tins of this stuff already unopened. I'll try and get the get the last drops out of this. Put the lid back on. Safety first. Now then, as I said, what I should do is this thing. Put that to one side, put that to one side. Let's do this, let's do this, let's do this. Of course, the thing is, if you have a, a little bit left over and you've put this dries in, I shouldn't really advise to put it back into the main tin in case it affects it. So that's why I make painting such, I thin it down in such tiny quantities. Because whatever I don't use, I'm, I'm probably going to. It's probably safer to chuck it away. Put a bit more in there. Like I say, it's, I'm taking the paint, it's right off the bottom of the tin. It's, so it's actually very, very, very thick compared to how it. Oh, there you go. Right then. Fire up the airbrush. Probably have to have a little bit of a rethink of this camera. Yeah, let's just, <laughs> let's just have a practice. Now another little thing, this is my airbrush, it's charging up, it's just blasting out air. And what I always do is just put a drop of thinners out there, this is just, just a vinegar bottle with a bit of tubes f uh, in the top, so I can be a bit more accurate pouring, like that go. Just, uh, yeah, that's working. That's just if you've got an issue with your airbrush, you don't want to put a load of paint in and then find it's not working because then you've got an airbrush that's full of paint that you've got to get out before you can try and uh, check out any potential issues. Uh, I'm going to need to answer this. Right, take that out. Clean that up. Get the airbrush, charge up the airbrush, one more drop, one more drop. See, and when I'm done with this top, what I'll do, one more drop, it's gonna fall out. is I'll put it I'll have to wobble the camera for this that's what I'll do it pair of helping hands hold it upside down like that into that bottle so all, all the paint doesn't form a big sludgy puddle at the bottom when it dries and then a skin and then a mess it actually all if you leave, you know, I can leave it like that as long as I want. Um, the excess paint comes out into that bottle. Next time, once you use that top, it's it's perfectly dry, and I haven't got a, a, a skin with a load of wet paint and cludgy crap underneath it. All right. Let's 
Let's get this bit where it should be. Put this a bit higher. Talk to the phones. Okay, we should. Good job. There we go. Turn the pressure down a bit. That should be okay. And Away we go. Okay, I think this is it. Right. And then almost straight away, what we can do is put all this off. And there you have it. There's a little bit of discoloration where the blue tack has actually been but that can be you can I don't know if it's catching the light you can't quite see but what happens with that you can get rid of that straight away with a coat of um, clear or future uh, it will level it all out and then obviously after that it's going to have a, a coat of matte so by the time both of them are done you've uh, any issues you've got the sort of blue tack residue sort themselves out plus this as I said this paints actually you can see on the brown how shiny it is. It's made like that, so uh, decals will go on it easier, and also that that helps with the uh, the blue tack coming on and taking off. Uh, right then, so I'm going to crack on with this. Carry on, blue tacking and painting. Uh, so hopefully the next one should be a, a, a reveal of this thing actually fully painted.